quick introduction. Um, that was me, slightly younger, a few more grey hairs now, but uh, um, it, it was me, I can, uh, I can assure you. So I'm head of corporate real estate sourcing. Sourcing is procurement or purchasing in, uh, in old money. Um, so I'm not actually a, a, uh, a corporate real estate or facilities guy at the moment. I've, I've done kind of more operational roles in that respect in the past, but at the moment I support that area of the business with uh, sourcing and, and procurement uh, um, activities. So, uh, so that's me. Swiss Re is a, uh, a large traditional reinsurer, so we, we basically take um, big chunks of risk um, either directly from the, uh, from the market or via primary insurers, the likes of uh, uh, Aviva or, or, or whoever, um, and we help them to balance and to spread that risk across the, uh, across the market. So we don't, we don't have direct relationships with the, uh, with the public. We're kind of one stage back in terms of a reassurance. Um, but in, in recent times, um, that market is, is quite secure, stable, um, but we're also, as a company, looking to expand into um, other uh, more diverse um, markets, which means um, different types of companies and different, more, more like startups, um, and also different parts of the world to our, our traditional base as well. So we, we've got that kind of that whole dilemma, which I think runs right the way through this um, in terms of the brand as to the traditional approach and the traditional. Um, culture of the company versus what's actually happening out there and, and, and things that are newer and, uh, and, and, and probably more interesting. So I've talked a bit about the characteristics of the business already. It's in transition. I think most businesses have claimed to be in transition anyway. Um, in terms of the markets we operate in, traditionally it's been we're a Swiss-based company. It's been Europe. We expanded into North America. Now it's very much about the developing world, South America and APAC. Um, so we're, we're kind of slowly moving into that. And again, we've got this, this tension that exists within the company, um, stable, solid, strong and stable, to coin a phrase, versus the more agile response to the market, startup type environment that we've got, and those things are, are, are very much uh, existing in, in parallel at the moment. Um, we're generally followers um, in real estate rather than leaders. There's nothing much we're doing in, at the sort of, you know, at the forefront of technology. Um, but I think like a lot of companies, we want to get the best from that, um, but retain our, our existing stable base. Um, I'm going to try and go through this in a bit of a narrative way. Um, and I'll start with a uh, little bit about working life and how, that, uh, uh, how that's evolved over, uh, over time. Um, what does the current or perhaps the more traditional corporate real estate brand look and feel like? Um, and I'm going to pick a bit of an example. I'm going to pick the WeWork example. Not really in terms of the business model. We won't, uh, you'll be probably pleased to know we won't be going into the, uh, the ins and outs of, of, of that at the moment, especially given the, uh, the kind of current uh, situation. I'm more interested in the branding and, and what perhaps we can learn from the success and expansion of that particular business and how they market um, themselves um, as well. Um, and perhaps that leads us towards um, a bit of a, perhaps a conclusion or at least some ideas around what does a, a more suitable and modern brand look like. So, is that okay? Any questions at this stage? Or happy I just crack on and uh, you, as I say, you try and stay awake and I'll, I'll try and keep things moving. Okay, so history and nature of work. Um, kind of interesting when you kind of look back and, and, and reflect on things. Um, you know, we all started off, um, well, I say me, I know I'm old, but I'm probably not that old, but um, people started off pre-industry and lo local, um, working probably from home, local artisans, working on the land, etc. small um, communications driven by poor transportation and very much local, uh, local infrastructures. As we moved into the sort of industrial age, industrial revolution, etc., increasingly facilities are centralised and scaled, mass production, commoditisation, and you know, all, all um, pursued by uh, economic uh, growth. Um, but uh, I, th I think even in those days, and again, this is a bit of a theme that will come out as well, that, um, that, that companies actually recognised the broader social need of people as well. So it wasn't just about 
pulling people into a working environment and uh, extracting as much uh, uh, productivity as, uh, as they could. Uh, th there were um, good, there was good evidence of that as well. But also in, in certainly more progressive um, facilities, there was also the need for social club sports and community increasingly as that industrial kind of revolution started to develop. So, so what, are we, what are we looking at post that? Um, I, I'm not sure I like the phrase really, but technology enabled global ecosystems very much about um, starting to bring people together. And you know, they say that the, the technology is ultimately the solution to everything. And certainly what we're seeing you know, beyond that kind of consolidation, we're now seeing perhaps a, a reversal of that, or at least a kind of coming around in a, in a circle of people increasingly um, operating in an ecosystem, but, but actually um, you know, being able to do that very much in a more local um, way. So reduced need to head to the office, and whether that's people who work for, um, you know, I guess, normal um, office-based companies, or it may be people who are working, you know, who are uh, on the move as well. That the need to actually migrate everybody centrally into the office is, is, has been declining for some time, uh, and people are increasingly moving on the world, uh, on, on working on the move. Um, I think that um, outsourcing has also contributed to that as well. So more and more people, um, companies, not owning um, vertically the whole kind of supply chain, but actually, you know, using. Uh, both consultants and workers who aren't part of the company and using their, their um, facility as a, uh, as a need to, uh, to do that. Um, Labour mo mobility, is, uh, as I think, has increased over, uh, over recent years. Um, but again, I think perhaps pulling in the opposite direction, environmental threats and cost will, you know, will ultimately stop us all um, or reduce the amount of travel that we're, that we're doing. Um, and if we, I guess we combine that with the technology enabling aspect of it, we can see ourselves perhaps moving back to a situation that we had um, previously where we weren't all heading into central organisations so much. So hopefully I've not overdone the, uh, um, the point. But uh, So I'd, I'd, I kind of want to focus a little bit on the, the current brand. And I, and I have... I have characterised this. This isn't the case with, with everybody. I think there's a, you know, a lot of companies are actually quite progressive when it comes to um, the way things are, uh, are going. I, I kind of go back to um, our company, which is a, has, a, has had a traditional approach and is struggling to try and um, embrace all of what's new coming along culturally. Um, but I'm, So I'm going to kind of, I guess, characterise the, um, the traditional approach to the kind of corporate corporate real estate and uh, um, facilities brand. Um, and, and I've kind of summarised it by the management of buildings based on ownership principles, whether people actually own their buildings um, or not. Companies, and there's been a move uh, again over time to, to reduce the actual physical ownership. But I think in a lot of cases, we still very much manage our buildings in a in a way in which we do, we actually own them, whether we lease them, own them, or whatever. It's, it's kind of it's that, that whole kind of mindset um, tends to suggest that. So to go into a bit about um, in a bit more details, it's about bricks and mortar buildings being safe and secure. Asset ownership um, is always important. It was seen as a benefit. There's various factors at the moment, including new um, finance regulations, which are really questioning whether people want or need to own um, own the buildings. Um, that they, uh, that they work in anymore. Um, and, and really a whole attempt corporately to try and own and tightly control the building and the environment that, that people um, work in, including branding, uh, uh, etc. cetera. Um, it's been quite reactive. If you take this kind of strategic approach to, um, to corporate real estate, um, trying to gather business intentions um, and, and try and then predict um, predict the future. So typically what companies would do is go and talk to um, their businesses who inhabit buildings and, to, and, and look at the potential growth, and it usually is growth um, that, that's predicted, um, tends to produce an over-optimistic and, and certainly an unpredictable uh, environment, and we end up in a situation um, a lot of times where buildings are, are under-occupied um, on the basis of, of, of over-optimistic um, over um, views, whether it be sales or expansion, um, etc., and trying to s second guess the future. 
Um, I, I think companies have tried to adopt a, a, a more centralised approach, and I think when it comes to perhaps um, that with services, I think that works, but when it comes to um, the actual property part and the, the, the control of the building, um, I'm questioning whether it, uh, whether it does um, so much. Um, and, and certainly our business is a global business, and we've really struggled with this, this idea of trying to um, impose and consolidate the company culture and standards and operating model in all of the different markets that we, um, that we operate in. Okay, so centralised approach deployed locally, and that's really what we've, what we've tried to do um, with, I think, mixed, mixed views. We heard um, earlier on um, around the, uh, the disadvantages of trying to standardise um, completely, and um, it, it's something that um, I, I think we, can, we very much have overdone in the past at the, in our company, and we're trying to roll back to a more local um, independent uh, idea. Um, I, rem I just remember a story where we um, we had a uh, uh, a very plush boardroom table that sat in the centre of uh, one of the offices in uh, in Zurich, and um, somebody had this bright idea of that's what we need in uh, in our office in uh, in New York City. So we actually had a table made in Switzerland and shipped all the way over to um, to our um, office in the US. Um, just so that it looked exactly the same. And, and I think that's kind of an example of, of, of standardisation gone way too far. There's a whole story behind it because it got damaged on the way as well, but that's, uh, that's uh, another, uh, another matter. Um, and I think also traditionally um, the brand has been driven by internal factors. So very much corporate, um, not necessarily taking account of local, local culture, local, um, local views. Based on anticipated growth, as I've covered, um, also mergers, acquisitions and divestment. Again, you know, we go through cycles of this. At the moment, um, we're kind of in a low in terms of uh, acquisition activity, but I guess that's really the point. If previous expansion um, has been predicated on um, the growth through um, mergers and acquisitions, and then you see a lull in the market, as we've seen for the last uh, couple of years or so, then clearly, again, you're into the realms of... of, of of buildings that are uh, under-occupied. Um, and also known elements as well, and also you know, perceived stakeholder desires. Um, and, I, and I think overall, what, we try, what we've tried to do in the past is to seek predictability in an increasingly unpredictable world. Okay, so that's kind of the current situation or, 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 or previous. Uh. So I think needs are changing. Um, and again, we've seen a few uh, examples of this in, uh, in, in the uh, earlier talks as well. So increasingly offices seen as a, as a connection point for, for people, much more about um, collaboration, different types of uh, collaborative space, lower desk ratios perhaps in some, uh, in some cases, um, and a real focus on productivity, um, enabling, um, enabling space, quiet space for people who want to work, more interactive, seamless technology and flexible being kind of the key words around, uh, uh, around that. And, um, and I think perhaps it's what we've missed is the, um, the emphasis on, I guess, what I called here workforce management. Well, what is the real purpose of the building? What's the fundamental um, purpose? It's, it, it's, it's not an end in itself. It's around you know, the workforce, attraction, retention, um, um, and attrition. Um, we've seen in a, um, a times of full employment recently, which I guess adds to, uh, you know, adds to that as well. But more about you know, a focus on staff, it being a fun place to work, and actually taking into account people's expectations. So um, I'm going to spend a little bit of time on the, the, the WeWork example. And as I said before, this isn't about the model. Um, uh, there's a little bit about that on the uh, bottom left there. Um, we work is really a, an, another um, a, other um, flexible um, office providers are uh, are also available. But as an example, um, you know they've been described as just a, a glorified corporate real estate arbitrage firm, and, and in a sense that's um, that's what they are. Um, the valuation, although extremely volatile, particularly at the moment, is uh, is still absolutely enormous. Um, only founded in 2010 managed to attract some blue-chip investors, 
um, but still their occupancy rates are holding, uh, are holding well, even, in, uh, even with the controversy that they've, uh, that they've experienced recently. But I'm more interested really in, the, in, in what they've done and how they've presented themselves and their environment that they're, that they're providing as possibly something that, that um, you know, we in the kind of corporate world could, uh, uh, could possibly take some, uh, take, take some learnings from. Um, I've highlighted, you know, just a few of the uh, a few of the key words, and they're not about property, they're not about facility. It's you know, together, community, uh, professional, but never boring collaborations, bringing our community closer. All of those things. It's it's that. It's about that. It's not about the building. Um, so what's new? So they don't. They did exactly the opposite of what a lot of the market was doing at the time. They didn't try and maximise desk capacity and minimise extras. They did the research. Um, they very much tapped into the freelance and startup trend. Although that, interestingly, that seems to have developed, and more of us in the, I guess, the more traditional corporate world are now starting to look at what that flexibility might bring to us um, as an advantage um, in terms of the, you know, the, the kind of volatility of the. Uh, environment that we find ourselves in. Um, again, big emphasis on the design environment, um, much more investment in communal spaces rather than desks, um, putting diverse tenants together, which was um, not exactly unheard of, but certainly a rarity in the, in the past and very much a, uh, you know, a disruptive brand. Um, and they came to the conclusion, and I think quite rightly, so far anyway, um, that companies will pay for flexibility and the environment that they, uh, that they work in. Whether the model is ultimately sustainable, I guess, is another question. Um, but I'm more interested in what, is, what sort of branding um, and what sort of image that they've created and how uh, perhaps that is something that we in corporate real estate could perhaps learn a, a bit from in, the, uh, in, the, in, in our world. So I'm going to return to the, um, to the previous... Uh, previous slide where I sort of outlined a little bit about the traditional approach and try and highlight the differences. So again, I've, I've, in terms of the drivers, I've put the, um, some of the key words uh, there that, uh, that perhaps it's, it's what, what our environment should be about. Um, so it's not about bricks and mortar so much. Safety and security is always there. And always, there's always a need, but it's kind of assumed. It's not that there's no big thing made about it. It's just, it's just there and, and, and a gentle kind of reassurance. Um, <coughs> asset ownership, so whether we own the building, lease the building, whatever, I think that people are, are less, less worried about that. Uh, I don't think it's, a, you know, it's, a big, uh, it's such a big, a big thing anymore. Um, corporate branding. I think there's a move towards this becoming a little less, uh, less important. In the old days, you know, big, big signage, over all the buildings, make it very clear. Everybody knows it's not um, it's not something that I think is is as important as it used to be. It's more about some of the other the other areas that will uh, that will come to. It's more about the environment and more about the people who uh, inhabit the uh, uh, the building. Um, <coughs> it's not reactive, so it's not um, predicated on growth. Um, so it's all about flexibility, scalability, and and the adaptability of the um, of the business. Um, a more localised approach, so more about disaggregation, the exact opposite of what, uh, where we've been uh, heading in the past. Um, it's really about suiting the requirements of the, uh, of the local business, replacing the community, possibly, that's, uh, that's been, uh, been lost as well. Uh, and I, uh, I'll, I'll come back to that as well. Um, so I don't want to make a, a great thing about the uh, generational um, side of uh, staff, uh, staff movement. Um, I don't think the whole millennial thing, I, I, I think it's a factor, but I think actually those of us who've worked, you know, who are much older than that, also are very kind of appreciative and yearn for, the, for, for a more flexible um, and suitable approach um, as well. But certainly the, the kind of uh, millennial factor has uh, certainly acted as a, as a catalyst in there as well. Um, and again, increasingly volatile world, Mergers, acquisitions, and divestment will continue to uh, continue to happen, probably more in the future, and, and you know this model will uh, will help. Okay, so I'll start to round up um, a bit now. So, what does this mean for the for the brand itself? Um, I think it, it brings us closer to the 
to the growth strategy of the organisation, not being too uh, predictive, offering the organisation some flexibility um, to, uh, to be able to accommodate change. Um, and I think it's, there is an increased import, importance of uh, safety in the real world, um, but again, I don't, whereas that, it's important that people understand and accept that, um, I don't think it's a big, uh, a big thing when it comes to the, um, uh, the brand. But I think it's what's more important um, is, is when we start to look at the fundamental role of the property itself. So it's about resource attraction, staff and, uh, and partners, attracting people into the business increasingly, retaining those people who are there in a safe and f flexible uh, environment, and, and I guess most importantly productivity as well. So technology enabled but also the environment enabled. And I think we'll start to see some times where um, as a, corporate, uh, as a corporate real estate function, we start to extend that reach beyond the building into uh, ensuring that people are, uh, have a suitable working environment more locally um, as well. Um, and I guess I also wouldn't underestimate the, um, the need to create that social hub. I, I work, um, our central office is in the Gherkin in, uh, in London, and you can go in there some days and it's, we have a flexible working policy and, it's, and uh, there are very few people in there. What we're finding we're having to do is to create events, some kind of social, some, some sense of community to attract people in at certain times um, of the month perhaps. We had uh, the uh, Oktoberfest last week which was uh, good, uh, it didn't quite compete with our Munich office but you know we, we'll, we, uh, we do our best and, and really to try and bring people in and extend that sense of, uh, of community as well. Um, so. What are we? Asset managers, workplace enablers, community creators? I don't know, but I think certainly the brand has changed um, in response to, um, I think, yes, new generations coming through, but also just a changing environment and an ever-increasing pace of, uh, of change as well. Look, I'm going to finish there.